Okay. Oh. Heads up, boss!
Yeah. <laughs> 
save Halcyon after all. Uh, everyone all right? You don't know how glad I am to see you. You lunatic. You broke into the board's own fortress and killed the chairman just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. Ah, all in a day's work for you, huh? You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. Hold on, Doc. Are you telling me the Earth went dark three years ago? And the board's just been covering this up? They've been incredibly effective at concealing the truth. Right now, the only people in the colony who know are standing in this room. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, yes, certainly. I'll help however I can. I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I don't know why Earth's gone silent. I don't even know if Earth exists anymore. We have no connection back to Earth, and return is likely impossible. We're completely alone out here. You might have heard of the Earth Directorate's frigate. Half the colony's entire military was on that ship. They were returning to Earth when they vanished without a trace. That was two years ago. We haven't heard a word from them since. Whatever happened to Earth likely happened to them. I wasn't trying to hide the truth from you, but after all you've done, I owe you an explanation. Yes, I experimented on the Hope's colonists. Each of my experiments ended in catastrophic failure. Each of my subjects died in agony. You are my first and only success. I didn't tell you about the others because 
I didn't want to burden you. My failures are my own to bear, not yours. I'm not asking you to forgive me. Law knows I won't forgive myself, but I'm going to try to set things right. My apologies. I need to get a hold of myself. We've far more pressing issues to worry about right now. If you have any more questions, ask me. I'll answer as best I can. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn colony one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? I can't tell you how glad I am to hear that. <sighs> when I revived you, I thought we were going to save this colony all by ourselves. But I was wrong. We can't save Halcyon on our own. We're all going to have to pull together, somehow. We are not a colony anymore. Our last connection to Earth has been severed. I don't know if we'll survive, but we're going to have to try our best. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists, engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope's scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. As the colony struggled to survive, the inspirational story of the iconoclast spread like wildfire, and Graham was able to bring many of the smaller Terra II townships into the fold. However, his zealous obsession with spreading the word blinded him to the needs of a growing organization, and the movement was unsustainable at scale. The iconoclast way seemed to work best, and ultimately petered out on Monarch. Sublight Salvage adapted to the changes in Halcyon, shifting their business model to suit the times. Their claims of legitimacy were scrutinized, but ultimately unquestioned. Lilia Hagen would continue to protect her family as ruthlessly as ever. The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide Medevitt's camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, 
Adelaide's camp grew into a well-established town. Adelaide McDevitt refused to cooperate with the ongoing effort to save Halcyon from collapse. A sympathetic deserter stole a copy of her research and delivered it to the Hope's scientists. It is unclear how useful Adelaide's research was. An optimistic estimate suggests her work may have bought Halcyon another few years of survival. Adelaide would never know. She died that winter. Under the leadership of Junlei Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave Junlei the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Ellie savored her adventures on the unreliable. Once they were done, she returned to life as usual, running missions of dubious legality, shunning respectable work, and living life to the fullest. She meant to reach out to her one-time captain, but she was always bad at keeping in touch. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Millstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease, telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. While the colony fell into chaos, she found an island of relative peace with Ada, and they formed an unusual bond. She decided to remain aboard the Unreliable permanently as its chief, and sole engineer. As hard as she tried to drink them away, Nyoka's memories eventually overcame her. Traveling with the crew served as a constant reminder of the family she'd lost, and so she eventually returned to Monarch to get back to what she found most comfortable, the deep end of a bottle and the far end of a trail. Few have seen her since, but travelers often swear they hear her and her machine gun in the night, screaming swears and spitting bullets. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest, and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived even after Wells passed away, the Hope scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day.
which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the Hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.